Hi, my name is Hans Westerhoff and I'm a coach in the Dutch Accelerator program. Today we're going to talk about customer validation. The importance of customers for your business seems pretty easy, right? You need them to sell your product to. Without customers, you're never going to succeed in building a business. But for the stage that you are in now, they play a much more important role. You need your customers to validate your business. So how is that? Well, you have identified a customer pain. You have a product, or a service for that matter, if I say product, you can think service too, that solves that customer's pain. You have an idea about your business model. You know how you're going to make some money because you did some basic financials. This is the plan, right? And now that you have a plan, you're going to execute it. I wish it would be that easy. Sadly, that's not the case. Your plan is just a set of assumptions at this stage. A coherent, well thought out set of assumptions, hopefully, but still, assumptions. Your plan will need to meet reality, your customers, the real world out there. And you know what will happen? You will find out that a lot of your assumptions will be wrong. Steve Blank captures this in one sentence. No business plan survives first contact with a customer. Because when you talk to customers, you might find out that they have other priorities. You might solve a pain, but it's not high on their priority list. They've got more important fish to fry. Looked at in isolation, your product might outperform their current solution big time. Well, that's great. But you know, it might just be a part of a much larger production process. And if that larger production process is the perspective of your customer, your solution might just add a tiny weeny bit that's not all that important to them. Or your product solves a pain, but implementation means that critical adjustments in the production process need to be made. And that might just be too much. Or your customer might not have buying power. There really is an endless list. The important thing is not to freak out when you think about all the things that can go wrong. The thing that you need to do is go from your initial plan to a plan that you can execute. Your customers are going to help you get there. This is the more important role of customers that I mentioned at the beginning of my talk. Once you have your plan, and you should have that by now, you need to go out and talk to customers. Talk to customers to validate your assumptions. Your customers are going to help you find out that one, some or a crucial assumption is wrong. That's not always a problem. It allows you to adjust your plan. You're on your way from an initial plan to a plan that you can execute. Your customers help you do that. In this stage, they are not first and foremost the people that you are going to sell to. They are the people that are going to help you find your way towards a plan that you can execute. We will talk later about how you know that you're on track of finding a plan that you can execute. And, truth be told, you might find out that your startup has no chance of succeeding. Your startup might sink. Of course that sucks. But would you rather find out that your startup has no chance of succeeding after five months or after five years? The importance of talking to customers has many implications. For one, we don't want you to think too long about your business plan and about your product. We don't want you to write 40 pages that we're not going to read anyway. We don't need a perfect shiny product developed in the lab. Because you are spending time and money on stuff while you're not sure it's being well spent. This is why we think that a couple of well thought out slides is good enough and a limited version of your product is good enough. You need to go out now and talk to your customers. This is the most important step to take. You need to go out. Why don't you sit down now with your team and look at your beachhead market? 
Start making a list of customers you want to talk to. Write down company and role of the organization that you're looking for. Stay focused on your beachhead market. You're not done after five conversations, so you will need a long list. When you have a good list, you can get to work. Go reach out and make sure you get people to talk to you. Depending on who you are, this can be difficult for several reasons. We regularly see that people do not really get into the mode of talking to customers because it feels exposed or not safe. You will not get all the interviews that you want. They might not like you or your proposition. The thing that you love and work your butt off to make a success of. Or because you do not feel ready yet. Your product just needs a little bit more development. Or because it's not really your job. You just did not yet get around to finding this business developer, sales or marketing person that is going to do all this stuff for you. But once you have him or her, this will be the first thing. Really. Well, I have news for you. Yes, it can feel scary. You will be rejected, maybe many times. But you have to get used to that and forget it, because it does not matter. What does matter is the interviews that you do get. Because those interviews will help you build your business. The rejections might not be good for your ego, but it's just water under the bridge. Just better get used to that. It is hard to get out of the building too early. Your product does not need a little bit more improvement. You don't even know your customers yet, so you don't know who you're building it for. As a startup, you have limited resources, especially a limited amount of time, and it's important that you do the things right. Building a product while you don't know your customers is not doing it right. There's only one way to find out what product you need. And you guessed it. In your first interviews, you're not going to talk about your product. You're going to go out and try and understand your customer. Figure out if he has a real pain. What that pain in his perspective is. What he does now to resolve it. How much it costs him. Etc. And last but not least, this is your work and not somebody else's work. You are not the product person and somebody else is doing the customer facing side. Your job as a founder is not just to build a product, your job is to build a business. To successfully build a business, you need to talk to customers. You as a founder need to do that. You cannot outsource it. Building a startup is exhilarating and sometimes scary. That's part of the fun. So if it is like this, you better embrace it. Go with all your heart. Try to find out as much as you can. Try to do it right. It's called customer discovery for a reason. Okay, you're going out and talk to your customers. Where to start? How to get those interviews? What questions to ask? How to do it right? Here, it is very important that you know what your goal is. And you need a few techniques to get you the result that you need. Before you start talking to customers, you need to do the following. We talked about how your plan is a set of assumptions. Why don't you sit down now with your team and chart your assumptions on two axes. How certain or uncertain are you that an assumption is true? And on the other axis, what is the impact of that assumption on your business? On the top right quadrant, you should find assumptions with high impact and very uncertain. Now that you have charted your assumptions, you know where to focus. Top right, focus on your customer and your market. Not on the product development risk stuff. You need to work on that too, but customer conversations will likely not help you there. Now that you have your riskiest assumptions and your first customer list, you can get going. Try to get those interviews. Leave your product at home. One reason people might refrain from having an interview with you 
is fear that you are going to try to sell them something. One way to prevent that is to ask for help. Tell them you need their help in building your business. Tell them you are not going to sell them something. You will find out that more people are willing to help you then. And when you have the interview, you are not going to talk about your product. You are not going to sell. That's what you promised, remember? You are there to find out as much as you can about your customer's world. Their problems, their solutions, their priorities and so on. Do not ask for intentions. Intentions do not provide valuable information. So forget questions like, would you be interested in a solution that does X, your product? People tend to be nice, certainly to you, this cute startup. So they will tell you they are certainly interested. Your product really looks nice. They would gladly hear more a few months from now. This might make you happy, but it is all noise. And you don't want to build your business on the basis of noise. You are after real information. Try to figure out facts, not intentions. So dig in the past, not in the future. What is on the maintenance list of this operations manager? What are his priorities? Are all these issues important? No? What's the ranking of this list? How does he resolve issue X? How often does that happen? Can you take me through this process? How much does this cost? You get the picture. Try to be a Sherlock Holmes. Try to get facts. We call these interviews problem interviews. You focus on the customer and their world. To get into a flow, be ambitious. One interview per week is not going to get you there. Aim for one or two interviews per day. Look at your co-founder now and nod. You're going to do this, right? To help you do these interviews, read the mom test. An easy read, but incredibly helpful book. Ask your coach. You do these interviews until you get diminishing results. You start hearing the same thing in all these conversations. That is good news. You have less assumptions now. You adjusted your business, maybe slightly, maybe radically. And slowly, your interviews will change. You know you understand your customer's pain. You validated it. You can get back to them. You did ask if you could come back, didn't you? And start talking about solutions. Finally, because you've got solutions, right? You might find that this process can develop into partnerships, sales or pre-sales. Remember we talked about getting from your plan, the plan that you have now, to a plan that you can execute? You've arrived. Your customers helped you get there. Get out of the building and good luck with your startup.